Hi, I'm James, and today I'm taking a look at this, which is the new for 2021 Dell Inspiron 14 inch 2 and 1 at 7415 laptop. This is a recently introduced model. I ordered it basically as soon as it became available on the Dell website, and I have purchased this myself. Uh, I have not received it as a review sample. Um, and the key reason I bought this was because it is based on the new uh, AMD Ryzen 5000 series of APUs. Uh, I believe it is the Lucian codenamed APUs, which are a development of the Renoir chips. Uh, so still Zen 2 core and uh, the Vega graphics, but with some improvements over what came before. Uh, so looking inside the box, being a 7000 series laptop, unlike the other 2-in-1 that I have from Dell, which is the 4000 series, we see we get a 65 watt USB-C charger, uh, our UK power lead for it. Then inside the box, we don't get much else. There is no stylus or um, you know, adapters included. But we get the laptop itself and then just our, our usual quick start guide which basically tells us to go to the Dell website and the usual warranty and regulatory and radio bits in there. So if we get the laptop unpacked we're going to take a bit of a closer look at it. Now turning our attention to the machine itself, and as we can see here, this is the entry level configuration which comes in at £700. Uh, for that you get a Ryzen 5500U. Uh, this has the Radeon uh, Vega derived graphics and is based on the Lucian core. Uh, we also get 8GB of RAM, which according to Dell is organised as two 4GB DDR4 3200 modules, so a dual channel configuration right out the box, unlike the somewhat disappointing configuration in the Intel Tiger Lake uh, Core i5 system of this type I bought previously. And we also have a 256GB SSD. Um, I've bought this base configuration because um, I wanted the 5500U to compare to other chips and also I'll be looking at upgrading that memory and SSD in another video. The system itself is coloured in mist blue and the chassis is a mixture of aluminium and plastic, so some plastic panels, some aluminium. Our Dell layout for the keyboard is all pretty standard. Um, so I quite like the way they retain a UK style of layout uh, for things like the slashes um, and I really have no issue with their keyboard having used the 5406 2-in-1. The screen here is a 1080p display uh, which they list as WVA or wide viewing angle, but looking at the specs does list itself as being a full um, IPS panel. Unfortunately, they don't give uh, brightness levels or color gamut in the specifications for the machine on their website, so I don't have these to hand, but if I do a longer, more full review, I will hopefully try and find some of these. Uh, other things to note, the touchpad, again, fairly standard for Dell. Um, it is smaller than on the 5406 because the machine itself is a little smaller. And we have our standard fingerprint sensor here. We also have the 720p webcam in the top of the screen with a little privacy switch. So if you do not want to be using your webcam, you can cover that over to make sure even if someone were to gain access to it or if you accidentally uh, join a video conference with it switched on, you can block it as so. Now looking around the laptop, um, we can see there are not a huge number of ports. Because this uh, particular machine is charged via USB-C, we lose the little Dell power connector Generally that I would say that's positive. Obviously if you have a few of these ch Dell chargers to, that you have around already then you're going to have to invest in USB-C chargers if you want additionals. Um, but we have so the USB-C not Thunderbolt port 
and this also does display port so it can be used to provide HDMI through USB-C hub and obviously USB-C power delivery. We then have what is labelled a 5 gigabit port for USB-A and HDMI which I believe is 1.4. Turning it around to look at the other side and we have a micro SD port, another 5, gigahertz, uh, five gigabit uh, USB-A port and a headphone connector for those who still need them. Comparing this to the 5406 Tiger Lake machine I've got, you can see the difference in colour here. Uh, you can also see, so the Intel uh, 5406 model is about a centimetre deeper and this is really owing to the, uh, the reduced bezel in the display. So obviously same size screen on both of these laptops but there is less of a bezel on the 7415 with the Ryzen chip. What we can also see is similar to the 5406 as we open the laptop the screen acts here to lift the system up slightly and just provides a little bit of spacing for airflow. This airflow then comes out the vents which sit at the bottom of the screen here so it does blow hot air onto the base of the screen and if we turn the laptop round we can see so the vents here as I say as the laptop pulls round blow onto the base of the screen so they're not obstructed but they will heat that part of the screen and they are rounded in shape heatsink is on this side and I believe these are just dummy vents on the other side just to give it symmetry. Of course one of the main selling points of this machine is that two-in-one configuration so the system can be twisted round and we can see in doing that it goes to tablet mode so we get greater spacing between items there. We can also switch it to the full tablet mode which gives us you know where it's acting more like a actual tablet where we have full screen applications not something I use extensively but some people do like it when the system is twisted around like this as well the vents then become on the top of the machine uh, so this is quite nice if you are say using it on a fabric surface uh, I often use them for watching like this so air comes out the front here and is drawn in through the vents here and you can also lay it flat where there are some little spaces again just to ensure that the screen doesn't rest completely against the base. Uh, for me the 14 inch size is a bit too big to use as a proper tablet but having the option there is nice and I quite like uh, using it in this configuration if I'm watching a film or something on it. With both laptops open and side by side, we can see that the 7415 actually has less bezel towards the bottom of the screen. So while the screens are the same size, the top and side bezels look to be about the same, but they lose that extra height there. Um, that does mean the touchpad is a little bit smaller, but uh, not as much as you would think, as again, there is a little bit less spacing here on the 7405. Looking at some of the other details of the Windows 10 install and the hardware we can see that this indeed ships with the Windows 10 Home 20H2 uh, so the latest regular build of Windows 10 comes straight out of the box as you would expect with this being a pretty new machine. We can then also take a look at pre-install software now I have installed a couple CPU, Z, uh, CPU ID tools, so CPU Z and HW monitor. We have the usual selection of Dell tools, Dropbox, and we also have McAfee, which I will be using, but not the, a great deal of sort of additional bloatware installed, just the normal things that we'd expect to find on a Dell system. And I would say this is you know, pretty usable 
Uh, I would take off McAfee and just either go with your AV of choice or Windows Defender in preference rather than the trial version of that. Looking elsewhere and CPU-Z confirms that we have the AMD Ryzen 5 Mobile 5500U. Uh, this against the 4500U found in a lot of Ryzen based laptops increases the, so keeps the core count at 6 but increases the thread count to 12. Uh, so this has SMT, uh, simultaneous multi-threading, or hyper-threading as Intel refer to it. And also checking the memory configuration, we confirm that we are running DDR4 at uh, so 1600 times 2, 3200 megahertz in a dual channel configuration. And checking the SPD, we can confirm that as well. Looking at HW Monitor, I have obviously not been doing a great deal with the system as yet. We only get a package temperature for this and not individual core temperatures, but see that what is mostly idle usage at the moment, you know, we are in the 30s, this will increase uh, with load. We see the turbo speed goes up to just over 4 gigahertz on this. And also pleasingly, we have the larger uh, 5400 milliwatt hour battery in this. Uh, the UK specification uh, 5406 laptops only had a 40,000 milliwatt hour battery, which was detrimental to battery life, obviously, versus some of the competitors. Also worth noting, because it is one of those things that people always ask me about, so currently with 68% remaining on default settings here, the laptop is projecting around six hours of remaining battery life. Um, now, obviously, this has just been with the laptop running, doing some initial Windows updates, uh, so it hasn't been any kind of intensive workload. It is connected to the wireless, but hasn't been doing a great deal besides that. Uh, even so, with the full charge, you could expect to see around, I would hope, nine hours, um, although with heavier use that will decrease. I will try and do some formal battery testing, uh, but having just got this machine up and running, I was really keen to just do an initial impressions and that will take some more time along with some performance tests. Taking a quick look at performance in Cinebench R20, and you can see here we line the system up side by side with the Core i5 1135G7 based Dell Inspiron 14 5406 2 in 1, and we compared them running directly against each other and also thrown into the mix the Ryzen 4500U APU as well. And what we can see here from the results graph in the top left is that versus the Core i5 1135G7, the new Ryzen 5 5500U has a big lead in multi threaded performance. Uh, we're looking at a nice 69% increase in performance relative to the Intel CPU, which was already losing out to the Ryzen 5 4500U. This isn't entirely surprising. The 5500U is very similar in specification to the old 4600U. Uh, not a chip that I ever got to use, but one which was quite sought after and rare to find in a laptop. So the fact that the 5500U is going to bring SMT to the main sort of Ryzen customer is a really nice benefit. And you can see through here, it just absolutely destroys the competition in this test um, a lot quicker than the 4500U and the i5. So I hope you found this video useful. And um, do let me know in the comments what else you would like to see me testing on it. Any questions you have, I will be doing a fuller in-depth review of the system and I will do my best to answer those as soon as possible. Of course, if you want to see that video, hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want to be notified as soon as the video is released. And hit like if you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.